Kolushabwali had finished his illustrious playing career, and it was time for him to pursue his passion as a coach, and soon as president of the National Association of Football. Bwalia, as the president of FAS, decided he wanted a young head coach, someone with energy and fire. That someone is a French man named Herve Renard. Herve's passion on the touchline demanded the very best out of each of his players. His players were the perfect combination of chemistry and raw talent. Emmanuel Mayuka, Christopher Katongo, Kennedy Muene. They all were very young when the tragic plane crash happened in 1993. The African Cup of Nations tournament didn't know these guys. They weren't household names to people around the globe like Didier Drogba, Yaya Toure, Jordan Ayu, Asamoah. Those guys were well known in the European football leagues. Those guys were setting the betting odds to be winners of the African Cup of Nations, with Ivory Coast leading at 1.5 to 1 odds to win it all. Zambia entered the tournament in 2012 as long shots, with 40 to 1 odds to lift the cup. However, if people weren't betting on Zambia, this team was betting on themselves. This tournament was being co-hosted by Equatorial Guinea and Gabon, with the final match to be played in Gabon in Libreville. The calendar was circled for February 12th, 2012. That was the goal, get to Gabon and to Libreville, where their brothers died 18 years before then. The groups were set. Zambia was drawn in Group A with host Equatorial Guinea, Libya, and Senegal. Senegal being the team Zambia was supposed to play before their fateful flight. As the matches were underway, Zambia drew Senegal as their first opponent, and this would be a crucial game to give them a leg up in the competition. Zambia drew first blood as they were given a free kick about 20 meters outside of the 18-yard box. A lofting ball was dropped in at the top of the six on the back post, and Senegal pushed towards the area. But they left Emmanuel Mayuka unchecked with a free header to give Zambia the early 1-0 lead. Keeper Kennedy Mwene would be tested in his own box, but disallowed Senegal's early attempt. Zambia's captain, Christophe Katongo, would rub salt into the wounds with a perfectly weighted through ball to Rainford Kalaba. Kalaba pushes it wide of the keeper and buries it home. Zambia lead 2-0. Senegal would answer in the second half, but it would be too late to make a push. The Zambian side or the Chipolo Polo boys take three points in the first match, winning 2-1. In the second match, the rain earlier in the day had completely soaked the pitch. This may not have been ideal, but it was very common for these Zambian boys who grew up in rainy season with large puddles on the field. Libya struck first, but Zambia draws level as the ball gets stuck in a puddle. It's then played out to the back post, in which the right boot of Mayuka hits it first time to the right of the keeper, all tied up in the 29th minute. After the halftime break, Libya again scored quickly, but Zambia stays with it. A bicycle cross perfectly placed it to the back post, met the captain's head, and Christopher Katongo brings Zambia level. The game ends 2-2, but keeps Zambia in the qualification zone. The final game would decide the winner of Group A. Zambia faced off against the host Equatorial Guinea. This hard-fought battle found its breakthrough in the 68th minute with the captain, Christopher Katongo, adding another goal to his tally. An easy lateral run to the middle of the pitch with no defender help left the keeper exposed to the near post. Zambia would hold on to win one to nothing and secure the top spot in Group A, thus giving Chipolo Polo the best opportunity to make a push for a deep run in the knockout stage. The boys had done their part at the group stage. Now they were only two wins away from the championship. Two wins away from returning to the country their brothers died 18 years prior. First up in the quarterfinal round, Sudan. Zambia came off firing early. Their set piece was met with the Sunzu header at the near post, giving Zambia the one nothing lead. In the second half, Rainford Kalaba was brought down in the box, giving Zambia the penalty kick. Katongo stepped forward and his shot was blocked but was quickly returned in for a goal. Chimanga adds one more with a curling shot to the far post. Zambia move on with a 3-0 win to take on Ghana in the semifinals. The next matchup against Ghana was a tough assignment for the Chipolo Popo boys. 
Ghana had recently beaten the U.S. national team in the 2010 World Cup. Their players had European football pedigree, and on paper, they were the better side. But football isn't on paper. It's on grass, with 11 guys on each side. The semifinal matchup was the biggest match for most of the players. Ghana poured on the pressure early. They were awarded a penalty kick in the first seven minutes in which Mwene dove and saved it well. It wasn't until the second half, completely against the flow of play, that Mayuka broke through on the scoreboard. This hard-fought battle continued, and Zambia held on as one to nothing winners and would play in Gabon in the championship match for the African Cup of Nations. Join us next time as Zambia honors their fallen brothers and seeks to put a cherry on top of their football performance. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss a new video. Tchau, Nana!